Deflection in Beams, the Double Integration Method. In this lecture, I'm going to illustrate the use of the double integration method for determining deflection in beams. The central equation in this method is deflection V equals to the double integral of M over EI with respect to X. This means if we know the equation for the beam's bending moment, the modulus of elasticity of the beam's material, and the moment of inertia of the cross-section of the beam about the axis of bending, then we can write an algebraic equation for the beam's deflection. This seems to be a rather straightforward double integration operation. All we have to do is to integrate m over ei twice with respect to x, and we have our deflection equation. Well, not quite. What if more than one equation is needed to represent bending moment in the beam? How do we handle the integration of a piecewise continuous moment equation? Or, what if the beam is made of several materials? If the modulus of elasticity is not constant, how do we handle two or more E's in this integration problem? And, what if the beam has a varying cross-section? Wouldn't that result in varying moments of inertia? How do we integrate M over EI when both M and I are defined in terms of X? In this lecture, we illustrate the application of the double integration method for handling such problems. Before we proceed, let's define another equation associated with this method, the first integral of m over ei with respect to x. This is called the slope equation. It defines the slope of the elastic curve in terms of x. Observe that theta x equals dv dx, since v is defined as the second integral of m over ei. Here, I'm going to use these equations without deriving them. If you want to learn how they came about, see lecture SA12. Obviously, the double integration method involves integrating a function. Hopefully, you still remember how to perform double integration on algebraic functions. If not, please take time reviewing the subject before proceeding with the rest of the lecture. I'm going to cover the double integration method in four parts. I start with a straightforward example in order to illustrate the basic steps. In part 1, I'm going to apply this method to a beam having a constant EI and a continuous bending moment equation. In part 2, I'm going to show how to solve problems involving more than one bending moment equation, that is, how to handle beams having piecewise continuous bending moment. In part 3, I will consider a case where the beam is made of aluminum and steel, each having a unique modulus of elasticity. Finally, in part 4, I will show how a beam with a variable moment of inertia can be handled using this method. Part 1. Suppose we have a cantilever beam of length L subjected to a uniformly distributed load having a magnitude of W. We wish to write a deflection equation for the beam. Assume the beam has a constant modulus of elasticity E and moment of inertia I. To use the double integration method, we must be able to write the bending moment equation for the beam algebraically. See lecture SA07 if you are not sure how to formulate such an equation. To come up with the necessary moment equation, I'm going to cut the beam like this. Then, I draw the free body diagram for the left segment. Finally, I sum the moments about the cut point to get my equation. The moment equation is mx equals negative wx squared over 2. Note that this equation is valid for the entire beam. Since vx equals the double integral of m over ei, I can write the deflection equation as vx equals the double integral of negative wx squared over 2 ei. OK, W, E, and I are constants. So let's rewrite the equation like this. Integrating x squared once, I get Vx equals negative W over 2EI times the integral of 1 third x cubed plus C1. Integrating the expression one more time, I get Vx equals negative W over 2EI times 1 over 12x to the power 4 plus C1x plus C2. Note that C1 and C2 are the integration constants to be determined using the boundary conditions. Since there are two integration constants, we need two boundary conditions. The conditions are deflection at the fixed support is 0, 
and the slope of the elastic curve at the fixed support is zero. I know that the slope equation equals to the derivative of the deflection equation, so the slope equation can be written as theta x equals negative w over 2ei times one third of x cubed plus c1. Now, let's see how the boundary conditions come into play. Deflection at the fixed support must be zero. That is, L to the power of 4 divided by 12 plus C1L plus C2 equals zero. Slope theta at L equals zero. That is, L cubed over 3 plus C1 equals zero. Solving these equations for C1 and C2, we get Therefore, the deflection equation for the entire beam can be written as Vx equals negative w over 24 ei times x to the power of 4 minus 4l cubed x plus 3l to the power 4. This equation is valid for x between 0 and l. Now, let's use the equation to determine the deflection at the free tip of the beam. Substituting 0 for x, I get v0 equals negative w over 24 ei times 0 minus 0 plus 3l to the power 4. So v at the free end of the beam equals negative wl to the power 4 divided by 8 times ei. This was a straightforward application of the double integration method. Now, let's turn our attention to the more challenging cases.